Well, good morning, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. Today I'm going to talk about what it's like having a large garden. Stay with me. Well, hello, I'm here by the sea. Good morning, it's April 3rd here in uh, beautiful spring Nova Scotia. And then today I'm going to find some squash in my tulip garden. Hi, it's Greg Otten here with MaritimeGardening.com. I'm going to talk about garlic. So, uh, today I'm going to go around my garden and pick a bunch of vegetables for uh, like Sunday dinner tomorrow, which is Saturday. And uh, I thought it would be useful to just speak to the general idea of keeping a large garden. My garden is about 2,500 square feet, um, 50 by 50, roughly speaking, 50 feet by 50 feet. And um, I really don't know anyone, you know, in, in my personal life, I'm sure online there's lots of people, but in my personal life I don't really know anyone that keeps a garden this large. Uh, moreover, when I talk to people or they see my garden, they kind of look around like, how do you do this? Uh, I don't have the time for that. And, uh, you know, i got to say, depending on what you choose to plant and what sort of system you use for your garden, I, I apply uh, various uh, permaculture principles in my garden, no-till principles, uh, use heavy mulch systems, um, really not that much work, um, far less work than one might imagine. Um, and also what you choose to plant and the different varieties you choose to plant and thinking about when those things will be available to eat. Um, all of that has a large effect on the amount of work you have to put into your garden over the course of the growing season. Um, so it, it's fall right now, and I still have some greens. I have some nice uh, kale in the garden. I've got uh, Swiss chard. I've got a lot of lettuce. Um, I've got kohlrabi greens. Um, what else? That's mostly it for the greens. Uh, some of my squashes are still producing uh, uh, fruits, uh, uh, zucchini and patty pan squash, so, certainly the winter squashes like uh, uh, pumpkins and stuff like that, but that's all still growing and not even ready to be picked yet, even though it's getting close to Thanksgiving, uh, Canadian Thanksgiving that is, which is uh, I think October 9th this year, um, next, next Sunday. But um, a lot of the things you plant, like my um, parsnips, and my beets and carrots, um, you plant those all like the first week of April, early April, and uh, they come up and once they're about three inches high, you make sure you got a good mulch on, and then you don't do anything. I mean, you just leave them. You don't water them, you don't touch them, you just leave them alone. I haven't touched them since I planted them. No work, right? Um, all the potatoes I planted in my garden, I literally just stuck them in the ground, put a mulch on, and, uh, you walk away. You don't water them, you don't do anything. You just, you know, once, once the potato plants die, you, you collect potatoes when you want to eat potatoes. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of the plant I would say half the plants in my garden, at least half the plants in this area, um, are zero maintenance plants. You stick a seed in the ground, you know, you, you, you know, uh, uh, things that are planted in early April, in this part of the world anyway, there, there's always rain in April. There's rain in April and there's rain in, in May. It's, it's rare that you need to worry about watering them. You plant them, you put some sort of light, uh, you know, I put a little light layer of hay or something over the seeds to keep the soil moist and they, they seem to just take care of themselves. Um, there's some things you have to baby. I find uh, kale needs to be babied here um, because it's, it's, it just seems to get attacked by every pest in existence. I've got slug problems with kale. I've got cutworm problems with kale. I've got flea beetle problems with kale. I got, <laughs> Uh, cabbage moth problems with kale. Um, so, I mean, that the kale's more work than anything else. And then once it's grown, uh, you have to pick it regularly. Um, you know, either use cut and come again, um, or otherwise the old leaves, um, the old leaves tend to attract pests. So, you, you know, it seems to like being harvested. It seems to like being regularly picked. Uh, it seems to do it a lot better. Um, but I'm going to just take you around and um, speak to um, what goes into maintaining a garden like this to give you an idea. If, if you were, 
if you have that kind of land, right here, here where I live in Nova Scotia, uh, if you live outside of the city, uh, land is rel it's relatively inexpensive to have a piece of land. And when I say relatively inexpensive, I mean compared to the price of being closer in town. Anyway, so what I'd like to do is just take you around the garden here and give you a sense of um, what goes into maintaining this garden. Um, if you're in that situation where you, you have the land and you're considering um, expanding your garden, you think, oh, do I have the time? It really depends on the varieties you choose to plant. If you plant a bunch of really high maintenance things that need to be pruned, and, you know, they're, they're uh, very tender and very lots of different pests attack them. Yeah, it might be a bit, a little bit time consuming, but if you plant stuff that just take care of themselves, um, and you've got lots of mulch, and you're putting things in the right places, and your soil is really healthy, um, really you put the seeds in and you kind of walk away, and then when the food's ready, you, you pick the food. <laughs> I also like to plant a lot of root vegetables. Uh, at least half my garden, I would say, or close to half, is various things that store well and can be just put in a cardboard box and stuck in my garage and uh, they'll just keep uh, into the winter. And uh, I start harvesting those things around this time of year. It, it, last night it got down to five degrees Celsius, which is the coolest day we've had so far. So it's telling me, and we're moving, it's gonna be October in a day or two. We're moving into uh, fall proper where it's cool. And that's when you can start harvesting your, your storage, the, you know, your root vegetables and things like that, or your winter squash, just things that store well. And, uh, but right up until this time of year, I don't even do anything with those plants, right? You plant them in early June, or if they're carrots and things like that, you plant them in April, and you just leave them in the ground <laughs> until this time of year. So let's go have a look. So here I have a nice bed of carrots. Um, had a bit of a weed problem because it was planted in uh, fresh manure, but, uh, Regardless, the carrots have come in very strong and very good. Um, so I need a few of these for um, dinner tomorrow, so I will pick them. Really all I do here is I, when I want carrots, I, I just come and take them. And I leave the greens right where they were. They just become a mulch. Snap it off. Right? It's a refrigerator. That's the way I think of it. Right? Look at that one, that one kind of weird. Alright, that's enough carrots. Um, over here, these are uh, parsnips, and they're not ready yet. Um, you don't you know, I've got a, a 4 by 10 bed of parsnips. It's a lot of parsnips, and they're going to be nice, I hope, nice, big, beautiful parsnips. But you don't really pick those till like the end of November. So, I mean, all I did was plant these. I think I planted these more closer to May, just because I should have planted them in April. I just got uh, a minimum error in my planting dates. Um, but I stuck the seeds in the ground. I watered them every three days until I saw them grow. I put a bit of mulch down, and I haven't touched them since. And I'm not going to touch them till November. And they grow so thick, I plant them the rows. The rows go perpendicular to the length of the bed. I plant them about eight inches apart, and uh, the foliage comes in so heavy, there's really not enough light for weeds and things like that. And they're a relatively pest free plant. Um, nothing seems to, at least where I am, or I've been lucky so far, nothing seems to bother them. So you just plant them and leave them. And, uh, around uh, late November when there's nothing else to pick in the garden here. Um, you know, I've got all the parsnips I, I could possibly want. Over here, um, in the foreground is uh, uh, Brussels sprouts. Um, they were moved and they've been attacked a lot and they're not doing so great, but that doesn't matter. This garden here really is a beet garden. And I planted these in April and I haven't really picked anything. There's beets and onions in here. See, I got some, some half decent onions going on here. Uh, I'll need a couple of those. Cooking a turkey tomorrow. 
There's some weeds in here, but there's also some pretty nice beets. Oh. That long tapered variety. All right. This is time, I mean there's different times of year. People some people have can get two crops of beets out of the garden. I can't. Um, but this is the time of year I pick beets. I'll just pick enough to make a nice uh, dish. I'm going to pickle some of these too. But I, I haven't touched this garden. I haven't done anything in this garden all summer long. I haven't done a thing. I haven't watered it. I haven't done anything. Um, so was this, uh, you know, so I just showed you three 4x10 beds that for this entire growing season I've probably invested about three hours in, all in. Um, the planting and a tiny bit of weeding here and there. Um, actually, this, this bed I haven't weeded at all. There's, there's weeds in here. Like there's a big um, clover root there. Um, but the soil is so uh, so good it seems to still getting some half decent. Um, those are the long cylindrical type of beets. There's different varieties. There's the short fat brown ones. I wonder if I have any of those over here. Yeah, see here's some of the short, fat, round variety of beets. I've got those as well. We planted the two different varieties. Anyway, so lots of beets. So that's three gardens that really took no work. So here we are, from another angle. This garden had um, potatoes in it for most of the summer and then once the potatoes uh, I started harvesting potatoes from this garden the, the first so uh, like the, this was the first potato garden I started to harvest from I planted them the earliest and I started harvesting the, the earliest so as I harvested them I planted uh, lettuce behind uh, or like where the potatoes had been being or where they had been pulled out um, and uh, you can plant a lot of potatoes because uh, you can just leave them in the ground uh, and leave them there until it gets cool enough that you can store them somewhere if you if you have a I mean, if you've got a cold room you can pick them and store them whenever you like but I don't have a cold room I have to wait till my garage gets cold enough for storage so I pick them as I can eat them and I leave the rest of them uh, in the ground for uh, until it's cold enough to harvest them so around this uh, Swiss chard plant, uh, which I planted this in April as well, early April. Um, they seem to take a while to grow here for some reason. Anyway, around this Swiss chard, even I can see one right here, there's potatoes, right? So I, I didn't, didn't harvest the potatoes from here back. So I still have potatoes um, in this part of the garden underground. And I need some for my meal tomorrow, so I also just grab them and just feel around with my hands. I don't want to upset the roots of this uh, Swiss chard too much. And I know there's potatoes in here. There's a beautiful uh, red Norland. It's my favorite. There's weeds there. Another one. So, I mean, these, these potato plants have been dead for, uh, oh, well over a month. And uh, the potatoes have just kept, because that's what they do. I mean, it's a, it's a rhizome. It's, it's storing, you know, uh, it's storing energy for the next season to grow new potato plants. And so they, they're, they're adapted to just being in the ground. Now, if you leave them all winter, uh, uh, some of them um, will rot and some of them will grow. I've never really understood why some rot and some don't. Um, I've noticed in my garden, I've, I've tried planting them in the fall to see if, on purpose, to see if they'll grow the following uh, spring and they, 90% of them rot <laughs> when I do that. Um, well, there's a lot here actually. A lot more than I thought was in here. Another one. Anyway, all these potatoes were just here waiting for me. 
just waiting to be picked. Not going bad. There's a little tiny one. Those are the ones you miss. And they end up good. For some reason, the little teeny tiny ones can survive the winter better than the big fat ones. Um, but in terms of a seed potato, you want the bigger ones. Now you don't want to leave them in the in the in the ground forever. You know, as soon as it's cool enough to harvest them and store them um, uh, properly, I would get them out because certain pests will attack them. I just noticed somewhere here. Yeah, yeah, so if you look at this red Norland really closely, um, right there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a tiny hole. So something is working at that. Yeah, tiny hole right there. Not a big deal, still totally edible, but something's working at that. Um, so if I leave that in the ground, um, whatever's b boring in there is just going to keep coming back and working on it and, and eventually uh, compromise the potato such that it can't be stored. Because any potato you're going to store uh, in cold storage, it's got to be perfect, right? You can't have some bug living in it. <laughs> That's not going to work. <laughs> um, and it just it doesn't have any integrity. It's, it's much more likely to rot and have more problems and so on. I got a few of those there. I think that's all of them. Anyway, when I planted the potatoes here, that was maybe the middle of April. And I planted the potatoes and I put about, you know, a foot of hay on top and just left it there. And uh, about two months later started harvesting potatoes and throwing lettuce seeds down behind uh, wherever the potatoes came out. I really didn't do much with the lettuce. I just threw a lot of seeds down and uh, some of them germinated, some of them didn't, and I thinned them out and reposition re them. I have another video where I explain that. I, all the lettuce in this garden uh, is just, uh, they've all come from one small patch right at the very end. That's where I planted this, the lettuce. I just threw like a handful of seeds on the ground and they germinated. And then as I harvested the potatoes, I would pluck up lettuce from this part and move them and move them and move them to fill the space where the potatoes had come out. It's almost like a transplant type thing, right? But it seems to work better than transplants because you're not, you know, frigging around with fluorescent lights and watering them and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I literally just threw some seeds down and put about half an inch of shredded up hay over the seeds and watered it. And then three days later I watered it and then I didn't do anything. <laughs> So uh, that's worked out great. Very little work, and I got, we got lettuce. This lettuce, lettuce can, this this variety of lettuce, uh, Paris cost. It's like a romaine lettuce. Um, it'll grow into October. Um, at some point, it'll get too cold for it, but uh, it can take a bit of frost, um, and uh, it's a really tasty lettuce. Over here, I have a garden that was uh, zucchini and patty pan squash, and it's just about done producing. I've made uh, some nice. Uh, relishes out of this um, and of course we eat the zucchini all the time and uh, uh, and the patty pan squash uh, you can cook those like a zucchini you can roast them and you can also make them into relish you can also pickle them and I've pickled them I might even do a video on that I'm debating over whether I want to do a cooking video this year <laughs> I haven't done any uh, cooking videos so that's something I'm toying with um, if you're interested make a comment if you want to know how to make lacto fermented uh, pickles just let me know this garden here is completely done growing. This bed was potatoes and uh, you can see there's like a trellis in the center that was peas. So I had potatoes and peas companion planted. Um, the peas came up, uh, you plant those earlier than the potatoes, they came up first. There was a bush variety called Alaska bush pea that I was really happy with. And then the potatoes grew. And uh, I've picked very few of the potatoes so all the potatoes in this garden, there's probably, I don't know, 30, 40, maybe 50 pounds if I'm lucky of potatoes in this bed. And they're just sitting there waiting. Uh, I can pretty much go anywhere. Stick my hand in. Well, maybe almost anywhere. <laughs> Where are they now? some nice potatoes right anyway this is this is full of nice potatoes like this um, all ready to be picked just waiting for me 
Okay, not bad. Uh, so this wasn't a lot of work. I mean, it took me, I, I planted the entire garden in a very short amount of time. And uh, uh, peas really take care of themselves if you give them something to climb. And these are bush varieties. Even bush varieties need a trellis to climb. They're called bush pea. A bush bean doesn't need a trellis, but a bush pea needs a trellis. They're just a very floppy plant. Um, but what makes the bush pea handy is that uh, they mature way quicker. So it's good if you're living in somewhere cold and with a shorter growing season, you need short plants like that. This bed is all kale. Uh, red Russian kale and or Siberian kale. Uh, I thought it was all red Russian kale, but only one of the plants are red. <laughs> the rest of them are all resemble uh, a variety I've seen online called Siberian kale. Um, most of these were planted from seeds I saved, so I'm guessing that uh, Siberian kale is just a uh, variety of Russian kale that doesn't have the pigment. Um, anyway, uh, these are all seeds I saved from previous year. Uh, they grew very well. I've been eating this kale since June, and I will, it just keeps coming back. It, it's a very productive kale, and uh, you just use the cut and come, come again strategy. And uh, I'll be harvesting this into uh, November. And I've got uh, Scotch curly kale on other parts of my garden. I, in my opinion, if you've got a family of four, and you like to have a good dish of kale two or three times a week, um, this this particular kale, red Russian kale, isn't the salad sort of kale. You have to blanch it or do something to make it uh, palatable in a salad. Uh, it's the kind of kale I, I prefer to cook it. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you like a big helping of cooked greens for your entire family uh, about three times a week, uh, two beds of this size will give you that if you're using a kale that uh, grows well in your area and is a and you harvest it using the cut and come again approach where you just take off a leaf or two from each plant and fill a bowl that way. I've been harvesting this for months and as you can tell it's going strong. In fact um, the last couple weeks uh, I have noticed it's started to taste better. It's become sweeter uh, and a lot of this um, family of plants tend to improve in flavor as the weather gets cooler. Although it hasn't really been that cool here, but it has been cooler at night. And last night was, of course, five degrees, so it's very cool. So this cool weather will be really good for the kale. They seem to love it. So I've got a garden here of uh, beans. They're pretty much done producing. It's getting a bit cold for them. They're getting a bit long in the tooth. But it's about 30 feet long growing along this fence. And it probably took about 10 minutes to put in. And I might have watered it once. And then it just came, you don't want to overwater beans, they can get all soggy and cool. I planted these the first week of June, and uh, around, around mid August they became available. Um, uh, real, but really, uh, in this part of the world, uh, pole beans, indeterminate beans, really don't become uh, uh, productive until I, I find at least uh, September. Um, the bush beans are the ones that you plant so that you can have them in August. Um, at least that's how it works here in my uh, microclimate. But anyway, not a lot of work to putting those in. Ten minutes, and then you've got you know a good month's worth of beans. Not only that, but you've got for one month you've got all the beans you can possibly eat, and you're also storing them, freezing them, and pickling them, and that sort of stuff as fast as you can to keep up with them because you don't want to see them go to waste. So you get a lot of beans for very little work. I also had a bean garden here, and I made a video where I uh, just pulled them, uh, uh, put the garden down, and got it ready for next year. So these were bush beans, and they were really done producing in uh, early September. And then one day I just cut them all off, and uh, I'm going to put a layer of uh, probably seaweed over this, and probably plant zucchini here next year, uh, or some kind of squash like that. Uh, anyway, very little work. You know, it probably took me. You know, better part of 15 minutes to plant all the beans in here. Uh, the most work was was harvesting them and finding ways to eat and use them. Now, this is an eight eight foot by eight foot garden. And of course, out here we've got the uh, very overgrown Ruth Stout potato inspired uh, potato garden. It, it, it's interesting. My garden is exactly the same size as Ruth Stout's garden. If you know anything about Ruth Stout, uh, an American uh, gardening personality, gardening enthusiast. Uh, author of many books on gardening. 
um, practiced a form of gardening very similar to what I do. Um, or uh, put it another way, what I do is very similar to what she did. That's, that's a little more fair. <laughs> she was one of the first people to really write a lot and talk about, not the only one of course, but talk about this form of gardening, this, this zero work or very little work gardening. So I, I did a video uh, early in the year where I uh, built these uh, garden beds and you can tell from the video I think each one of them took about six minutes there's ones further down that are made with wood that took longer of course but these ones I just put manure and potatoes and hay um, but uh, if you look anywhere in here you'll find uh, potatoes Oop, potato <laughs> there you go right? so So I got three garden beds here. Took about 20 minutes all in to uh, to make those gardens, and that's all I did. I just did that and walked away. Ten dollars worth of seed potatoes. It's ten pounds worth of seed potatoes, and I wouldn't be surprised if I got 30 or 40 or 50 pounds of potatoes out of that. So not bad for 20 minutes work and and uh, ten bucks worth of seed potatoes. Anyway, so uh, that's how I do it here. It's not that much work. Uh, you know, come out and pick a big bowl of uh, produce like this, probably take me about five or ten minutes. And that's a lot less time than going to the grocery store because it's about a half hour drive from my house. Um, and of course, it costs very little. I mean, this whole garden here uh, probably used 20 or 30 bucks worth of seeds. And I mean, I'm, I'm putting a value to that, but a good number of those seeds, in fact, all my seeds in this garden this year were provided for me by uh, uh, Mackenzie Seeds. Uh, they didn't give me money, but they provided the seeds. So, and they're just a, it's a variety of seed that you can get at like hardware stores. I don't even think they sell them online, to be honest. Um, but uh, they worked really well. But, you know, if you were getting them for free and you had to, and some of the seeds were seeds that I, I saved from previous uh, harvest to previous years. But if I were to put a value, if I had to go buy that many seeds, all the seeds I bought for this garden, probably 30 bucks worth of seeds. So, you know, a fraction of a weekly grocery bill, a fraction of a weekly grocery bill for a family of four can fill an entire garden like this, right? Um, so uh, it's definitely worth the money. And uh, it doesn't really take a lot of time and what little time it does take, you can just use that if, if you're really concerned with your time. Um, just call that exercise, because <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, you're not getting dressed up in a workout suit. You're not uh, paying for a gym membership and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, you're moving your body, you get some fresh air here. Uh, if I do anything that involves any sort of work here, I usually work up a sweat. That's exercise. So anyway, I hope that was uh, helpful. I hope that gave you an idea of what's involved in, in keeping a garden like this. Um, I don't come into this garden every day. Uh, I come here whenever I, this time of year, this is uh, end of September, from about, I don't know, late June all the way on. Um, really, I only come here when I need food. And while I'm gathering food, if I see something that needs to be done, maybe a tomato needs to be tied up or there's a wheat I can pull or whatever, I might do that. And there's days I don't come in the garden at all because I'm busy doing other things. But, you know, on any given day, on a typical day, I'll come out here and uh, spend about 15 minutes in the garden, um, usually filling a bowl with produce and attending to anything that appears to need tending to. Um, and that's it, 15 minutes a day. And of course, there's a couple days a week I don't even come in here because I'm out of town or just busy doing something. Or maybe it's raining or maybe I just don't feel like it, right? Um, the garden takes care of itself. I'm using permaculture pr principles here. It's a no-till garden, a heavy mulch garden, and uh, it uh, really does, to a large extent, take care of itself. So I hope that was helpful, and uh, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, check out some of my other videos. Um, you can like us on Facebook. Uh, check out my, I uh, also have a podcast uh, at maritimegardening.com, uh, where I talk. <laughs> it's just an audio pod where I talk about this sort of stuff. Um, uh, every couple weeks we'll put a podcast out. Alright, so 
thanks for watching. Get out there, have fun in your garden, and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.